You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, I'm Betty. Welcome to my Newport home. I can't wait to show you around. Hello, I'm Betty Bearden Pardee in Newport, Rhode Island. Very fortunate to live here. When we moved here about 30 years ago and decided to build a house a few years after that, I realized that there was no reference book on the private homes of Newport. So I produced Private Newport and Living Newport um, coffee table books that capture about 35 of the private homes of Newport. And of course, from there, social media, blogs, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are today, and I'm so happy to be visiting with you. We did something that we had said we would never, ever, ever do, build a house. But we found this lot, which had been originally part of the Belmont Estate, and took a deep breath and dived into home building. It turned out to be the most fun we have had, and we cherished and adored every moment of it. And one thing, of course, as we all know, when you build your own house, you can personalize it. And I'm really looking forward to walking with you all through this house and showing you the choices that we made. And a lot of them have to do with entertaining, having been an editor at Bon Appetit, uh, producing Entertaining with Style, uh, I've had lots of ideas and opportunities and photo shoots and meeting people to get some great ideas. This is a salon, which is the main room of the house. It's got a slight oval shape to it um, that I found more appealing and also gave us the opportunity to do some very important storage tricks that I can't wait to show you all. But first, I love the floor. I had no idea that we would be able to find and have that wonderful contractor pattern these floors after of course, French floors. It's wormy chestnut that we found on the internet and had the boards planed and he created this beautiful, it's a sort of a parquet de Versailles, but a small version that's in scale more with our lifestyle and this room. But one thing I really love and I wanna point out to you all because I think it says, speaks so much to my lineage. My darling mother who's Southern, when we were building the house and she was so excited, she said, darling, is there anything from my house that you would like? And I paused because she has a very beautiful home in Atlanta. And I said, well, mother, I, I wouldn't think of taking anything. She said, no, I want to see you enjoying it while I'm still alive, not after I'm gone. So we built the room in honor of my mother with that gorgeous 18th century giltwood mirror that she let me take out of her dining room. And I said something to her, she was so funny. I said, well, but mother, that's in your dining room, don't you? And she said, oh heck, I'll just get the other one in the bedroom and put it over there. <laughs> so anyway, her spirit is in this house. And as we go through it, I'll point out one or two other things that, um, that she gave us. And I'm so glad she did because she lived at least 12 years after we built the house and moved in. This is another piece that, um, you know, antique that we discovered, and what I love so much about it is the sexy curve of the metal from the pedestal that it's sitting on. And then we had a wooden top done and then faux painted to look like marble. But when you enter from the front door, this is the first thing you see. And of course, it goes with the oval of this particular room. And I also have claws that can cover it, um, but I just, think that it deserves to have those legs being shown off like that. And then um, I have a thing about consoles. So I found this in uh, Christie's catalog, a pair of them on either side, gilt wood. They're not French, they're Italian, but I think they go very well. And the beautiful rose, deep rose fireplace that we found at an antique shop in Maine. Of course, the fun of building his house is the treasures that you find and the story that went with each treasure. Oh, the trek up to Maine or this and that. And then, you know, the husband saying, are we ever gonna get there? And finally we got there. But 
here again, it fits so beautifully to the scale of this room. And I have to say, I have to point out that I'm all about flowers. And I love the opportunity today to dream about some of the things I've always wanted to do, but this was an opportunity to do it. So one of them, for instance, are um, special topiaries that were done just for you all um, with clematis scaling up them in um, an old, old, old terracotta pot. And I think they just bring the garden indoors and still look very dressy. And also, we're, our ceiling is about 10 and a half feet, not too, too tall. And I love stacking. It's not a salon style. A salon style would have the whole wall covered, but at least the three gilt wood frames marching up that panel draw your eye up and make you look at other details like the overdoors here, which I had said we have some tongue in cheek. That's to me very tongue in cheek, a little something from a 18th century French house. Um, and then these are closets. One, two, and three. And do you want to know what's in the closets? Yes, I do. Well, let's go over. Let me show you. Now remember, I said I am very into entertaining. And one of the rules of entertaining is that if it's close at hand, you'll use it. And it'll be a lot easier, and you won't fuss about entertaining. So here you have the gold ballroom chairs that go at the tables when you're dining. They are stacked shaker style, and I can get eight in each closet. So I've got 16, which does two tables, 54 inches. But the real fun, and here again, you'll see this wall is a little wider than a normal wall would be between rooms. And look what's in here. All of the roll-out tables. So you must have some pretty incredible dinner parties. Oh, well, everybody in Newport does. But this just makes it easier. And we don't have a formal dining room. We just dine in every room in the house. We have Christmas Eve dinner here. We have Christmas Day lunch in front of the, well, that's a secret. I will tell you about that later. Um, but anyway, I just think if it's, if it's here and you can put your hands on it, you'll use it. Another Italian piece in an otherwise French house. <clears throat> It's an 18th century giltwood settee, which, and I just love the curve of it. And it picks up that curve of the wall, which is part of what makes this, gives us a feeling of being um, an oval room. And this is fabric that I had forgotten that I had. It was in my mother's attic, and she reminded me I had it since 1970. And it's a beautiful hand-printed clearance house with a Chinese scene on it. And the colors, to me, are so magical. And the way they light up, and of course you've got the window right there, so you're looking directly onto that pattern. And then there's a little tiny chaise here, little tiny chair that, well actually it's the foot, footstool to a, a chaise that has the same fabric on it. But you know, one thing we were so lucky about, when we built the house and started building in 1997, the contractor who had been in charge of Doris Duke's Newport Restoration Foundation was available. And here was a man who was only used to working on 18th century houses. And we very much wanted this to feel like an 18th century house on the interior. He understood exactly what he, we wanted and he rose to the challenge and he's still one of our best friends. <laughs> Well, it's very French. A number of the touches are very tongue in cheek, not to be taken too seriously. It's on a scale that is, well, certainly for our lifestyle, not, you know, 20 foot ceilings as so many of the mansions in Newport. But everything from the beautiful wormy chestnut floor to the Honduran mahogany in the library, these were all the touches that just brought us such pleasure each day all of the room openings are very large. So you flow, I'll never forget my mother. I grew up in Beverly Hills, California, and we had a Mediterranean house. And she said, this house does not flow. And I've always taken that as a measure. So I knew when we built this home that we would be sure that you could easily move from one room into the next. And yet the rooms aren't so large or the opening so big that you feel put off by it. 
And this is the Parquet de Versailles, but then we took it and flowed, here again the word flow, right into the sunroom. And you can see it's a totally different pattern with almost pie wedges and then centered with the uh, leopard print round table, skirted. I just love, I think it's such a soft, soft, soft feeling to walk into a room. And of course, that's one of the tables that I can use for dining for one group of eight, or I can go in here and get another one. And this room can actually hold three 54 inch round tables. And then my love my red I have to have I have to have a red I have to have a room that has red in it and I have these uh, here again Italian in my, my French house uh, Italian um, painted uh, chairs four of them but one thing in this room I'm looking at and we just put this out we just got the sofa in our apartment in New York in the 70s no not in the 70s I'm sorry in the 80s um, had Fortuny pillows, and I have saved them, and I built this settee around this and the red chairs I had. So I always have a spot in one room of any house or apartment I've had that has red in it. And I am so excited about way, the way this works. I sort of call it my Deanna Vreeland room because she, you know, she loved leopard and she loved red. Talk about serendipity. We are... Uh, we only lived at the time about half a mile from here, so it was very easy to come over every day. And I was here on the job all day long. Um, and I came in a little early one day, and they were finishing, um, you know, the wall board and everything. And I walked in, and I looked up, and I saw this interesting, gorgeous shape. And I turned to the uh, carpenter, and I said, "Louis," I said what is this? And he said, oh, don't worry, Mrs. Pardee, we're, we're going to be boarding over it. And I said, no, no, we're not going to, we're going to keep this. So we took the painting that had been done on the walls and we continued it up into that, but come and stand underneath it. You feel like you're underneath a Chinese umbrella. And very importantly, I'm standing right here and this is where the Christmas tree goes and it can be 11 feet. They're hard to find, but anyway. So at Christmas time, this is a Christmas tree. And if I hadn't gotten over there early that morning, that would have been gone. If you had to ask me my favorite room in this house, I would say it's this room because of the paintwork. And at the time we were building, there was a wonderful book out called The Swedish Room. And this is where I was inspired to have the painters do this hand-painted work on all of the walls, as you can see. And one thing right here, they also touched it with a little bit of gold. So at night, when the candles are on, this glimmers a little tiny bit. But I love color. And here again, back to the red. I love, this is my favorite vignette. Come here, and you just have to get this right here. The two chairs centered on the panel and with that sconce above. Well, of course, that's Augustus Caesar, dressed to go out in Newport. <laughs> I always have to have a little bit of wit in each room, something that draws a question like your question. Um, and actually the rest of the fascinator came out or dropped off after I was getting out of the car to go to a party. So um, I haven't glued it back on, but I think it suits him very well. And at Christmas time, we put, we put ropes of Christmas balls around him and then we can drape him with fabric and oh, we have a lot of fun with Caesar. When I was talking about being so fortunate as to find all these treasures, whether it's a mantle or the wormy chestnut boards, um, I was at church one morning and this older couple who were dear friends of ours, um, she said, well, I, I hear you're building. Uh, do you need any library paneling? And I said, well, I, yes, I, I think we would. She said, well, I've had some in storage for 37 years from my parents' house up around Brown in Providence. 
And um, she said, I, we'd love for you all to have it. Now this is Honduran mahogany, the kind that you can't get anymore. And coincidentally, the, their library and their home in Providence had been about this size. And all of this had come out of their home. The, the, the baseboard, the sideboards right here, as you see, right here, all the way up to here. We did the door surrounds because um, of the, the height of the doors. But it just it's, gives new meaning to recycling. And every time we walk in here, of course, we spend a lot of time here. It's the library. We have dinner, the two of us, right there every night. We always think of this couple and who are no longer with us. We created this bar because but this just is right there and it's hidden and, and you don't even know about it until you open it up. What is Betty Pardee's drink of choice? Champagne. <laughs> I didn't hesitate, did I? No. <laughs> This is another thing. I, mean, I keep talking about entertaining, but um, I'm such a flower person and love, just love bringing the garden in and in, in as many different ways as I can. And while I adore a fire and a roaring fire during the winter when we're here, I don't like that big black hole in the summer when it's sunny out and everything. So I finally said, this will be the reason that I will come up with something that will sit there for the summer. These are begonias, a beautiful shade of begonias with a, with a sort of um, plummy and the little seafoam green inside. And we put them in a, a um, copper, big copper container. And I picked up the clematis, which is the same color, and the blues of the delphinium that pick up this color down here. So you've got this correspondence between something that had never been here before and something that I've been doing on a regular basis when they come into bloom. So this is probably one of the most exciting things that I did in getting ready for this shoot was finally identifying something to put in the black hole of a fireplace during the summer. And as we move from the library across the sunroom onto the sun porch, I wanted to point out something, again, in each room, I wanted to create something that was a bit unusual as a floral decor statement. And we came up with the idea of all the precious miniature hostas, tiny, 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 look at these little leaves. And they're just in a red and gold lacquered top to an old, old, old Chinese box. I love using found objects that you wouldn't otherwise use for, um, or a flower arrangement. So this is just a touch of green in this room, just enough. But then we go out to my happy place in the winter and in the summer, but the sun porch. And we have um, screens that we put in at the end of the, the, that are otherwise glass. And we can sit here all winter and be at about, you know, lovely 65 degrees. This green and white, is just the shade of the hedges that are out there that you see through the window. So it's a seamless view taking a right out as opposed to another print that I had had in here before that was a little disruptive and a little break between here and the outdoors. And we're looking out at the garden, which we are going to go visit in just a moment. But first, follow me and let's go in and look at the kitchen, which I think will surprise you a bit. Well, here we are, the last, the last room we're gonna see on the first floor, the kitchen. And as I said, you were in for a little bit of a surprise. It doesn't look like your typical white kitchen of today. Uh, and this was done 23 years ago. And I don't even know what was popular back then because I always knew that in this French house, I wanted to have a very country French looking kitchen. And again, back to my wonderful mother, it is her French armoire around which I built this entire kitchen. And talk about serendipity. I have never seen this color limestone, but we were fortunate enough when I went up to the, to the marble house and lo and behold, here was this color, which I had never seen before. It's the same color as the fruit wood of the French armoire. 
and of the cabinet um, doors. And it's just the warmest. Everyone walks in this kitchen and just wants to stay. Well, everyone wants to stay in the kitchen. <laughs> but anyway, it works. It works. It works so well. And um, I didn't want I didn't want any cabinets. I just wanted. And let me show you the armoire holds so much. I mean, you can get you can get a, an entire kitchen's worth of of plates and glasses, et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> in here. And then, of course, next door we have a china closet for the fancy. But this to me is so much easier. Open two doors and you've got everything right there. Well, this is just, I've always loved banquettes and being nestled in someplace. You know, when I go to a restaurant, if there's ever a choice, I'll take the banquette. <clears throat> and this just worked right here, got the window, and the table fits right in here with the, with the pillows so that you feel like you're, you're really comfy. And then the draperies that are just hanging down to soften the walls. And except for our lunch, I'm going to show you the china closet, one of my favorite closets in the house. Lots of champagne flutes. <laughs> Wedding china, which is Herond. And this is my newest find, La Tuile La Loupe, the French, wonderful, wonderful French pottery. But I have to say, one that always stands out for me because it's so unusual as a plate. It's an old Tiffany set. That here again, I found it in an antique shop in Newport. This beautiful chinoiserie scene and that yummy shade of Chinese red. Back to red. I couldn't be in the entry hall and not give you all something special. And my gardener was able to find these two pots of very tall, gorgeous apricot lilies that just fit right here at this spot with the chaise behind us and the gilded mirror. And from here, we're gonna go up the stairs. And this is where I'm going to have the opportunity to tell you that the architect built our home, designed it around this beautiful wrought iron staircase that he had found in a townhouse in Manhattan. I didn't even know he had it. He had a barn full of all these wonderful pieces. And, um, which you can see when you go up. It goes up three stories, and of course the polished brass handrail. But every time I walk up and down this, I feel so romantic just knowing that story and where it came from. And then of course, curving the steps to give you that sense of you know coming down and meeting the tumbled limestone floor, which is sort of a casual ver version of the more modern or the more, um, a classical white marble with black. So this is again, the honeyed colors, the buttercreams with um, a light gray for the little diamonds. Come on, we're going upstairs. When we were building the house, I knew that there was one thing that I was going to be determined that I would do right. And that is the second floor landing was not just going to be a lost space, but a space that welcomed you up the two guest rooms are off of this landing, so it also gives people an opportunity to both use their room and then to come out here. I wanted to cozy it up by having um, the right angle bookcases that have every kind of book in it from every topic you can think of. But what I knew we were going to center this space with was this wonderful Biedemeyer library table that I found in New York just before we were moving out and every time I walk up here and I look I feel like I'm in a room that I can sit here and of course I wanted to have a window seat so that there was no doubt as to the fact that you could rest here you could sit you could take a book you could read it you could look at the family photographs and everything and into the bedroom we come and this bedroom is definitely centered by a Lee a la Posene Lee a la Polonaise bed <laughs> that I designed 35 years ago for our apartment in Boston. And of course, then the architect designed this room with its peaked ceilings for um, this bed. 
I always love that about you know architects, how they can just make things fit and it all comes together like a jigsaw puzzle. And it's very romantic, but it's not cloyingly oppressive like very heavy side panels that are typical to um, a you know, canopy bed. And we face the east, so we get that sun in the morning. And here again, the colors are a soft buttercream. It's just such an easy color to live with and everything coordinates with it. I mentioned Boston and just as we were leaving, I was in one of the antique shops and I saw these panels, wall wallpaper panels, painted on silk and um, silver. And I thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they're too beautiful to pass up. So I bought them and of course, they work perfectly in here, making a very large four panels, which hide the television, which is behind here. So I don't even have to look at it, except at night when television is on. So reminder, if you ever see a beautiful panel or a few of wallpaper, buy them. You'll always find a place to use them. Oh, here again, flowers for me is, is where my life starts. If I've ever felt a little stressed or something, I'll go out in the garden, clip some flowers and do an arrangement. So I always want to have something, certainly always by your bedside, because you go to sleep and you wake up and it's right there to greet you. And I had fun, I've never done a, an arrangement using <laughs> begonia leaves and ladies mantle, which is you remember we had in the library. Um, and then of course the beech leaves. So every time I do something, it's a different arrangement. And to me, that's one of the joys of flower arranging. And it just fits right here on this old gold stand and just informs, I think, when you walk in, the picks up this beautiful French chest. Well, actually, if we're talking about the bedside table and the flower arrangement, um, I'm gonna mention that this is a table I made. I loved the base, but it didn't have a top, but that didn't stop me. So we put a top on and um, I love, I love embroidered linen. So this is part and parcel of why I have linens that repeat the linens, which I adore. Making a bed is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and then just my favorite girlfriends, my favorite moments are all on this bedside table. And always a little pad to write notes if I wake up early in the morning or late at night and um, want to remember something. So it doesn't hold a lot, but each one of them means so very much to me. And I also love chagrin. So I've been collecting um, pieces of chagrin over the years. And I love the shade of green. And here we are, we've left the house and the rooms and now we're in the garden rooms. Uh, this is the largest garden and the one that looks most French and honors the architecture. And what I love about this garden in particular is that everything in here is evergreen. In the winter when we're here, we are looking out at green and it makes such a difference when you're spending time as we love to do up here in the, in the, in the winter time. We're standing in what I consider my coziest garden and it's green and white. When we were designing the house, and then of course I was designing the garden to go with it, I looked back on all the English gardens that I'd seen and loved, and the French ones, and there was one common denominator, and that was a green and white garden, whether it's Sissinghurst or whatever. And it is so easy and such a pleasure to, to plant and to cut from this garden. And then this wonderful, surprise Christmas gift from my husband, the Christmas that we were breaking ground. It's an orangery and it actually is also a, a greenhouse. You can see the, the glass roof can, can open. One thing I love is that this is such an intimate space because it only seats eight to 10. Whereas the larger garden, I can have 75 for a cocktail party and it's still, it still feels cozy and everyone's outdoors. And of course we know how important that was in the last two years. Well, here we are in the cutting garden where you're going to really get a dose of color. Lots of roses, it's that time of year in Newport. And 
I, I saved these and I didn't cut them for in, in the house because I knew you all would want to see them. This one, you'll get a big kick out of the name of this rose. Delish, D-E-E-L-I-S-H. Durandii Climatus. Um, just started putting in our dahlias, which of course in August, September, and October are just glorious and really supply all of the color that we need for the house because a lot of other flowers are not blooming in um, October. Um, roses, unfortunately, the deer have had their way with them. And then we swing right around more ladies' mantle and our little spot of culinary heaven with my favorite kale and of course strawberries and uh, little French um, strawberries. No, I meant um, cher um, cherry tomatoes and that. Um, and then just some oddities that just work you saw this as you're going up the stairs, um, nice and big and proud and just a beautiful froth of, of pink right next to the right next to the blue and more roses. And some phlox is coming up. It's sort of a Duke's mixture. It depends on what we lost last year or what I wasn't happy with or more importantly, what I really wanted to trial and hope that it would work. And I think this year it's probably more roses. <laughs> well, I got so carried away with roses, I had to move my peonies out to the back courtyard. So they now have two very large beds here, which is a lovely happenstance because they are right across from the 82 foot rose chain that is going by a little bit now because roses, have, they sort of go down in July and then come back in August and September. but. To me, this is such a defining statement in what is normally just the back courtyard with the garages. And you can imagine how many times a day I drive in and out of this space. And these never cease to assure me that I made the right decision in trying this out and it worked. And the Crown Princess Margareta is the name of that gorgeous rose. It's a David Austin. I have to say, truly having lived here for almost 35 years, it is magical. And I'm always fascinated to see so many new people who come to town and they all feel the same way. There's no place like it in the world. And I know that sounds like a big, bold statement, but it is true. The trees, the architecture, the water, the breezes, and of course, so many people forget we're on an island. So that makes it even more special. And I couldn't be happier here. We even stay here in the winter. I love it in the winter. The snow falling on the, all the topiaries and the green hedges that we've designed for the garden just give you a totally different feeling about Newport and this property. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.